The hair today is very architectural, so we've made a ponytail and so we filled it up all down here and then to cut it straight at the bottom. I love my hair, I feel like I'm princess. It was like a greenhouse. The winter garden, even for me, there is, it's seasonless or couture, mm -hmm. and there is no season and everything, but there was this idea of a winter garden. They were like kind of real, they were painted on it, they were embroidered on it. It was this idea of a porcelain statue of, of a goddess, and then no, like painted with, with big like uh, porcelain schools. <laughs> This approach is really couture because it makes every different piece special. I mean, each piece is done. It's like, it's not a show, but it's like a little show in every little clothes. It was so ravishing and the flowers and it was just gorgeous and Jean-Baptiste kind of lifted us up into a, the lighter side of things. Very rich, I think, of ideas. I love all the stripes. That is something that really part of his vocabulary. He has done beautiful clothes with stripes for Dior. It was sort of a reinterpretation of different cultures, and so it felt. It sort of felt like a Dior melting pot. There's a whole kind of Spanish theme to the show, flamenco, all of that fabulous stuff. A very blackened eye, very black coal, a little bit of sweatiness, a little bit of a shoe polish texture. Sensual. No, I don't like myself with anybody else. It's all part of our love spell. The collection is inspired by the, the painting of Velasquez. It's as if a few months ago, I saw them for the first time. It means that uh, a lot of austerity, rigor, black, minimalism, graphism, and I played with this to bring it to the 21st century, to modernity, but also to sensuality and femininity. femininity but a very architectural way and this is what I like you know all these pieces is a really piece of architecture you know the way they done uh, for me it's, it's amazing If 
I was a young girl, I would just throw on an antique thing, rip it up the back, put a pair of jeans on, and I thought it was couture for cool. You know, it was cool couture. <laughs> Maison Margiela does something that's exquisite, completely its own, handcrafted, um, vintage, recuperating you know pieces from the past and making them relevant for the future and for now. If you have a textile cabinet de curiosity, I think this collection would fit perfectly in your cabinet of curiosity. Maybe the ultimate luxury is to be perishable. The silhouettes are beautiful. It's incredibly feminine. The embroidery is lovely. It's never too outré or too strange. It's it does what it says on the tin, and it's really beautiful. I think it really does define couture in every sense of the word. It's fantasy, it's magical, it's pieces that the customer will want to wear and it it was just breathtaking it really was it felt like a fairy tale a, a queen you know the regality of it was just perfection the ambassador of Schiaparelli. For the first year it was like, you know, uh, explaining for the people who doesn't know who was Schiaparelli because she was very, very important last century. She was like the, the most important stylist in the fashion world. We want to continue the fact that she was always working with artists. That's why we start with uh, Christian Latroix. It's an homage, but still it's fresh, it's a new look, and you can wear it today. I mean, it's really wearable, all of them. Just take off your shoes, you've nothing left to lose. Just take off your shoes. The shoes stay on my feet. The shoes stay on my feet. The shoes stay on my feet. The collection is called Wilderness Embodied. So it's much about wilderness. Um, in general about the nature part of wilderness, but also the wilderness in people itself. Like the way people try to transform themselves in um, in operation, but also in scarification, so the 3D skin is in there, or piercings. That's really the human side of wilderness. I also used the natural side of wilderness, um, so I tried to catch all the movement which you can find in nature and I also try to even have my process more natural. In a way we made some dresses uh, to magnetic force. So we have a two component silicon with metal powder inside. We put magnets under it and structures are growing. So some of the dresses were not created by hand, but created by a very natural, natural power, which is magnetism.
started holding your hand Oh, that I wasn't speaking slowly so that you'd understand And no, it wasn't that I wasn't always there on demand And we alive it's all about light and shade, very serene makeup. And we're using white pencils, white cream, just to give the eyes more light, bring light to the eyes. Cup of coffee and admire the view and we alive. For us, a Zen garden is the most beautiful uh, image of uh, mindfulness and uh, that's the state we are in after 20 years of you know being very ambitious and always running there comes a moment when you know you just want to be happy with where you are and what you do Going to the very uh, spare and austere uh, look um, so we made everything in one fabric and everything is black but we treated the fabric in ways that uh, the, the surfaces look like the texture of rocks so it looks very spare but when you look up close it's very intricate and there's not one straight seam in, in this entire collection because we wanted everything to look very organic so everything is rounded nothing is pressed And pretty much in all the clothes, just the details were slightly different. It was very much couture concept, conceptual art meets haute couture as only Victor Noff can do it. the hair very dry and with some little air pieces like this and very flat here and a little bit of volume on the back. Voilà. For the makeup we decide for uh, black eyeshadow but with a lot of glittering, watering thing to make the eyes like uh, champagne. All the beginning of show, it's a balance between tailoring and uh, souplesse. You know, in fact, the jackets are very precisely cut and uh, with pants very supple. I try to mix uh, different fabrics. You see there is a lot of work on the belt. There is a lot of work on the back of the dress, on the bustier, because I introduced some bustier in the collection, you know. Bustier and short dress like this, you know, with big bombers in alligator or in python or something like that. It's a bit like a tattoo flower on the head. It's a very tiny head and you have all these little flowers like uh, it's Boldini but like thinking modern. Bazir is totally part of the film, the collection, yeah, which is uh, about Boldini, the painter, Giovanni Boldini. So I was inspired by him because I love uh, the way he represents women. Uh, it's a kind of portraitist, kind of picture, but in the, way, the touch of the painting is very strong. It's, you know, a mix of Victorian vibes, uh, Boldini touch and, and of course in, uh, in our time.
all the idea was about like Panther Woman and to play also with the fabric and also Fellini and David Bowie in Ashes to Ashes. It's a beautiful video, you know, uh, where he is like a clown uh, uh, costume, you know, which is actually like fabulous. And I always dream to do one like that, you know. Those pockets were sometimes like attached to coat, jacket, and sometimes it was like a belt that was over trousers, you know, and like a kind of sharp silhouette, a little a silhouette of the clown. The white clown always is there with that. I want the leopard hair. But also I want the sparkly dress and the gold dress and the one with the feathers. <laughs> and the, and the, the whole leopard kind of in chiffon, the whole leopard, leopard, leopard with the leopard hair. <laughs> what is great about him is that it's couture. It's beautiful, it makes you cry it's so beautiful, but it's witty. He's the only one that has a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. 